Welcome to Story Station, episode 11. In this episode, you can listen to three stories from Europe, China, and Egypt. The first story is titled, Jack and the Buttermilk, from Europe. A witch tries to take buttermilk from a boy multiple times, but he outsmarts her. The second story is titled, The Cruel Hunters, from China. The story of three hunters who were cruel to an old man and how he got revenge. The third story is titled, The Clever Guess, which is from Egypt. Listen to a story about an intelligent traveler who is falsely accused of stealing a camel. Hope you enjoy it! Today, I will read a European story called, Jack and the Buttermilk. Jack was a boy who sold buttermilk. One day, as he was going his rounds, he met a witch who asked him for some of his buttermilk and told them, told him that if he refused to give it, she would put him into a bag that she carried over her shoulders. But Jack would not give the witch any of his buttermilk, so she put him into her bag and walked off home with him. But as she was going on her way, she suddenly remembered that she had forgotten a pot of fat that she had brought, bought in the town. Now Jack was too heavy to be carried back to the town. So the witch asked some men who were brushing the hedge by the roadside if they would take care of her bag until she came back. The men promised to take care of the bag, but when the witch had gone, Jack called out to them and said, If you will take me out of this bag and fill it full of thorns, I will give you some of my buttermilk. So the men took Jack out of the bag and filled it with thorns, and then Jack gave them some buttermilk and ran home. When the witch came back from the town, she picked up her bag, threw it over her shoulder, and walked away. But she had not gone far before the thorns began to prick her back, and she said, Jack, I think thou'st got some pins about thee, lad. As soon as she had got home, she emptied the bag upon a clean white sheet that she had ready. But when she found that there was nothing in the bag but thorns, she was very angry and said, I'll catch thee tomorrow, Jack, and I'll boil thee. The next day, she met Jack again and asked him for some buttermilk and told him that if he would not give give it her, she would put him into her bag again. But Jack said he would give her no buttermilk. So she put him into her, her bag. And again she bethought her that she had forgotten something, for which she would have to go back to the town. This time she left the bag with some men who were mending the road. Now, as soon as the witch had gone, Jack called out to them and said, If you take me out and fill this bag full of stones, I will give you some of my buttermilk. Then the men took Jack out of the bag, and he gave them the buttermilk. When the witch came back, she threw the bag over her shoulder as before, and when she heard the stones grinding and rattling, she chuckled and said, My word, Jack, thy bones do crack. When she got home, she emptied the bag on the white sheet again, but when she saw the stones, she was very angry and swore that she would boil Jack when she caught him. The next day, she went out as before and met Jack again and asked for some buttermilk. But Jack said, no, again. So she put him into her bag and went straight home with him and threw him out upon the white sheet. When she had done this, she went out of the house and locked Jack in, intending to boil him when she came back. But while she was away, Jack opened all the cupboards in the house and filled the bag with all the pots that he could find. After he had done this, he escaped through the chimney and got safe home. When the witch came back, she emptied the bag upon the sheet again and broke all the pots that she had in the house. After this, she never caught Jack anymore. The end. I hope you enjoyed this story. The next story begins in a moment. Today, I will read an ancient Chinese story called The Cruel Hunters. In the county of Sing Tan, in Hu Kuang, there was an old and much respected gentleman. He had three sons who did not care for culture and refinement, but spent every day in sports and roaming through the mountains. 
One day, the three went out hunting with a large company of young people, and they met an unexpectedly old man in white garments who knelt and thus addressed them. To refrain from injuring all growing things, and from killing whatsoever is awakening into life, is the part of universal loving kindness, as observed by saints and sages. It is now springtime, when everything in nature is starting to life again. If you pay no attention to the tenderness of heart as practiced by holy men, and by unchecking the wild passions lurking in men's hearts, if you set the woods afire and exterminate the animals and insects that inhabit them, you will surely incur heavenly displeasure and suffer the consequences thereof. I, poor old creature, have seven young children in my family, and there is not time to remove them to a place of safety. But if you, gentlemen, have pity on us, we will never forget your mercy and will reward you later. The three leaders of the party did not exactly understand what the old man wanted, but, without further thought, promised to do as he had requested. When the old man was gone, some of the party began to wonder who he could have been, and whence he might have come into the wilderness, and they argued that his appeal to their sympathy did not sound human. Possibly he was the spirit of some old wild animal living around in the mountains. Upon this suggestion, they pursued him, and seeing him enter a cave, spread a net before it, and started a fire in the entrance. Suddenly, a white stag darted forth from the hole, and breaking through the besiegers, climbed up to a near rock, and then, assuming the form of an old man, turned back to the hunting party, exclaiming, You have killed my seven young daughters. You shall have to pay a penalty for this heartless act. A calamity ten times greater than I have suffered will befall your family. The three young men tried to shoot him, but he caught up the arrows in his hands, and breaking them to pieces, disappeared. Later, there came to their house a Taoist monk, who predicted for them an imperial career and great prosperity for the future. Incited by this prophecy, they organized a rebellion in which many of their friends joined for the purpose of overthrowing the reigning dynasty and establishing a new government under their own leadership. When the, while the preparations were going on secretly, somebody betrayed their conspiracy to, to the authorities. Soldiers were immediately dispatched to their home, and surrounding the house put every one of the family under arrest. On examination, they were found guilty of treason. Seventy members of their families and associates were executed according to law, but nobody ever knew of what became of the Taoist monk who had been the real leader of the scheme. He, as well as the man who had betrayed them, disappeared. The End I hope you enjoyed this story. The next story begins in a moment. I will be reading an Egyptian story called the Clever Guess. There was a trader named Nazumi. He had inherited business from his father. Once, he set out for another city with his camel loaded with goods. It was hot and sand dunes were all around. Suddenly, sand sandstorms blew. Nazumi took shelter in an inn as evening was approaching. He offloaded goods and tied the camel outside. He was very tired and fell asleep in no time. In the morning, when he woke up, he found that his camel was missing and the load of goods was also not there. He began to weep. He went to the innkeeper, but he knew nothing about his camel or load of goods. Nazumi ran around to look for his camel. The roads were deserted. There was no human or camel to be seen for miles. Hopelessly, he walked on. At last he met a traveler. Nizumi asked, Brother, have you seen a camel going on this way? The traveler said, No, I saw no camel, horse, or donkey, but I think your camel is one-eyed. Nizumi caught the hand of the traveler and pleaded, That's it, so you have seen my one-eyed camel. The traveler withdrew his hand and spoke, I told you that I didn't see your camel. Nizumi walked alongside the traveler in, hope, in the hope of getting more information on his camel. 
He was sure that the traveler had seen it, and that's how he knew the camel was one-eyed. After some time, the traveler said, Brother, why are you bothering me? This road goes to the city. To the, city. Th the thief must have taken this road. Run ahead, you might catch the thief. I think your camel was loaded with sugar on one side. Nizumi was stunned. The traveler correctly knew what load the camel was carrying. So he knows about it, Nizumi asked. You were right. What was on the other side? My, maybe some gra grains, the traveler answered. Now Nizumi was certain that the traveler had seen his camel. He started arguing with the traveler. The traveler pushed him. Run! If you waste time, you might lose the camel. Nizumi ran on the road, not knowing what else to do. He ran on for hours. Then he saw a resting herd of camels. Some people were resting under the trees. Nizumi looked for his camel. He found it tied to a tree, and the load of grains and sugar was also there. Nizumi screamed, Who brought my camel here? No one replied. He wanted to get the thief punished. Who could steal his camel? He suspected that traveler. Either he himself was the thief or the thief's gang member, Nizumi thought. He untied his camel and traveled back towards the inn to catch the traveler on his way. Nizumi met him some distance back. The traveler asked, Got your camel? Nizumi was feeling angry. He got down and grabbed the traveler. You steal camels and then play innocent, huh? Nizumi took him to Quasi and complained that the traveler had stolen his camel. He narrated the entire incident to Quasi. Quasi asked the traveler, Tell me, are you the thief or his accomplice? The traveler calmly said, Sir, I never saw the camel. How could I steal? Quasi said, if you had never seen, seen the camel, how did you know that it was one-eyed? And you also knew it was loaded with sugar on one side and grains on the other. How come? The traveler explained, I just used my intelligence. The way I was traveling, the leaves and branches of the bushes on the right side of the road were uneaten. Only the left side bushes had been grazed all the way. It was possible only in case of an animal with one eye doing that. And down on the road, on one side, sugar had fallen. The ants were at the sugar grains, sugar beside flies. Perhaps the sack had a hole in the sugar was spilling from. Similarly, on the other side, birds were feeding on food grains. The food grains don't grow on the road. Therefore, I guess that some beast of burden had traveled that road carrying loads of sugar and grains. Quasi and Nizumi heard in silence. Nizumi begged the pardon of the traveler. Quasi praised the intelligence of the traveler. The end. I hope you enjoyed this story. Thank you for listening to Story Station. We are adding stories as frequently as possible, so check back often. We would love to hear your feedback and any questions you may have. Thank you.